Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having an outstanding week. Welcome to another vlog. Today, we're going to do a little bit of overview for my strategic storytelling course. See what we've unpack what I have, not we, because you guys aren't taking it, just me. So I'm going to unpack what's the assignments for this week in strategic storytelling. Before I begin, I want to share a piece of a clip from one of the videos that we have to watch for this week. So I've queued it up over here. So let's take a listen. What we are listening to, it's the, the title of the video is The Magical Science of Storytelling. And the presenter is David J.P. Phillips. And he is at the TEDx Stockholm Talk. Possible. PQ Media tells us that $10.5 billion is turned over in product placement revenue every single year. How is it possible for you to be so easily tricked by something so simple as a story? Because you are tricked. Well, it all comes down to one core thing, and that is emotional investment. The more emotionally invested you are in anything in your life, the less critical and the less objectively observant you become. And the greatest emotional investment of all is falling in love. Now, falling in love. Okay. Risk. Uh, went a bit, little bit too far. What I wanted to draw your attention to is what he says in the beginning of that clip. That PQ Media states that there is over ten billion dollars generated from product placement. Now, in the beginning of this clip. He's sharing a story about a man and this man went on eBay and he purchased 200 items. The cost of the purchasing these 200 items totaled $129. Then he took each item and he reached out to 200 authors. He asked these authors to write something about these items so they did and he took those same 200 items and put them back on eBay one of those items was a horse head now when he bought the horse head originally it was 99 cents after he put the item back on eBay with what the author wrote the item sold for $62 and some change so his initial investment of $129 returned him $8,000 when he resold the items after putting them back on eBay with a story attached. And what he says here in this clip, what he's referring to is product placement in movies. We become emotionally attached to the story in a movie well in that movie there are many items that have been placed in the movie some of them are just for costume and just to make the scene and some of them are intentionally there to influence your decision as a consumer to go out and look for that item and buy it and that is what the whole strategic storytelling concept is about telling stories that impact people and that impact creates an emotion and that emotion is what influences that purchase that is the magic of storytelling so as I sit here to tell you about this class and what we're going over, building this skill set, it's not just about 
being able to tell a story around a campfire while the family is on a vacation or you're out with a group of friends. What it's about is building emotion in what you're doing on social media, for example. And when you build that emotion, you then have influence on how people respond to your product offer. So I'm going to pause there and we're going to get into what is some announcements for this week. We had quite a few. I need to switch my gears. Give me a sec while I do that. And we're just going to touch on um, a couple of the announcements uh, that she had for us this week. And what we're supposed to be doing. So I'm going to flip over here. Once again, I am still, um, I've taken myself out of the bottom half because the overlays are messing up. So let's click over here. So here we are for this week. We've got a journal we're going to do, which that she has, um, encouraged us to do that by the middle of the week. So it would give us free up some time for us so that we can focus on our um, milestone one submission, which is uh, the first phase of the the final, final project uh, that we will be doing. So she's telling us here, try to complete your journal entry early this week. She wants us uh, in the journal to address some things as you can see here. These are the requests in the journal. Address all of the following. Provide an overview of the story you shared in module one. Memorable stories discussion. Describe your physical, mental, and emotional reactions to the story and explain how personal culture and life experience influenced your reactions. The Keep in mind, she tells us uh, what specific she's looking for. Uh, one to two pages, double spacing, 12 point times new Roman. And when you're taking these types of classes, you want to make sure you, you follow these instructions because the rubric is broken down into sections to give you points. So you want to make sure those points you can get to extract as much as you want. You want an A, at least that's the goal. The key is following the rubric. You follow the rubric, you can get the points. And let's see. She has here that um, you're going to, let's see, milestone. So you got to do a story pitch in your milestone one. So with this assignment, you'll start working on your final project submission for this project. Imagine that you're a communications consultant. And you've been given the task of developing a strategic story to help an organization meet a goal. In the industry, it's common to get approval for ideas first before embarking on a major project. For this milestone, you'll develop a story pitch that you could present to your direct supervisor in order to receive approval to pursue this story for the rest of of the project. You will start this process by choosing one of the following scenarios. So all I have to do is choose one of these scenarios. So scenario one is a nonprofit organization base, excuse me, a nonprofit organization focused on saving endangered wildlife wants to raise awareness about the impact of natural disasters on wildlife. A nonprofit organization that operates a food pantry and kitchen is having difficulty retaining volunteers to work in positions that do not directly work with the people the organization serves, such as stocking shelves and early morning kitchen prep. A nonprofit organization that works with the LGBTQ plus youth is looking to promote their new 24 seven crisis text service and recruit volunteers to work as crisis counselors. For a for-profit organization that manufactures furniture wants to increase the sales of its new line of tables and that, uh, see, that can extend to multiple directions 
to accommodate up to 20 people. A for-profit organization that provides financial planning services wants to announce its new office in a country outside the United States. And a county public health department is concerned that the people living in the country, the county, excuse me, do not trust their information or recommendations because of negative implications of being a government organization. So you must choose from the above list of scenarios. Make sure to choose a scenario that you are most in- interested in as you will use the same scenario for all project milestones and for the final project submission. While you can't change any of the details given to you by the scenarios, you can personalize the scenarios by adding information not already specified in the scenario. For example, you cannot make a change like this. A for profit organization that provides floral delivery services wants to announce its new office. Can't do that. But you can do a for profit organization that provides financial planning services wants to announce its new office in. And then, of course, you can change it instead of being in the United States, you can change it to Botswana. So they don't want you to change that it's a financial planning business, but they don't care where the business is. That's basically what she's saying. Identify if you're unsure about what changes you can make to your chosen scenario. Make sure to either post a question in the general questions section of the forum uh, for clarification. Once you've chosen your scenario, you'll move to developing your story pitch in Microsoft Word. Okay, this is pretty meaty. So what we're doing here is we're going to develop this pitch and then we're going to communicate so we're, um, the communication goals. We're going to use uh, the focus here is to use the resources that you've gathered up until this point, and you can pro- reach out to um, research in the library and gather more resources. As a tip from me to you, if you're watching this and you're going to embark on this class and you're wanting to know how you can be better at this. What I have learned from doing these assignments is the more information you have, the better it is to do the assignment. Number one, but be careful. You don't want to get too much information because then you have to, you have to digest that information, reading it, analyzing it and finding the nuggets and the gems that you need and pulling out of it to create the story. So you don't want to go get too much. What I like to do is swim in the information. And by swimming, I mean, based on what they've already given me, finding something that I want to expand on from that, and then going into the library to find something to expand that piece so I can basically fill it up. A lot of times I feel like they've given me a cup with a few drops. I would prefer my cup to be half full, not all the way empty. So that's why I go to the information and do those things. So uh, these are her criteria. I, enjoy reading through the announcements. There is a lot of information when you, with your instructors give you. And I encourage you to definitely use your announcements to get yourself in the mindset of what you need to do. I'm checking my time. Uh, I started a little bit later than I wanted to. Now she released another announcement on the 16th, a couple days ago after she did this announcement. And she basically talks about um, personas, digging deeper into your audience. If you've not, if you're not familiar with personas, the definition of a persona is likened to um, <laughs> your most of your stories uh, I'm going to think of like little red Robin Robin little red Robin Hood 
and the personas in that. You have a young person who is seeking to find their way. That young person encounters the wolf, that which is the predator, which is the person that's a threat. And that that predator chases that person throughout the story with the intent of influencing that person to doing something. And Little Red Riding Hood is going through her path. So the personas in the story is young adult and predator. Mm. Mm. Okay. Maybe that wasn't a good story. Anyway, moving on. But this is persona. So they're talking about personas here on the announcements. And uh, she go gives us a little bit of overview about digging deeper into your audiences and finding out some of the uh, some of the characteristics of the audience so you understand how to pitch the story. And here it talks about why we define audiences, which it, uh, you have heard, I'm sure if you've watched any YouTube video, they talk about niches. That's basically what she's saying here. Find your niche or understand the niche that you're talking to. So in the earlier announcement, when we, when she was going over the criteria and choosing the, the scenario, when you choose that scenario, you're going to want to pay attention to who the audience is going to be when in that scenario. So for example, you're, you're talking to nonprofits what is the pers- what are the personas that usually work in nonprofit organizations the board the nonprofit board what are their mindsets what's their psychological makeup those type of things and that's going back to what i said before they give you some trickle in some some drops in your cup you want to expand on that so you're going to have to go out to the internet or to the school library and do some research about the audience of a nonprofit. Who am I going to be speaking to? What is that persona? What are some characteristics to define this audience? So that when you do your storytelling, you do your pitch, you one, you connect with them. It's about connection. Find that connection to a, um, what do I like to, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but the connection is, is finding that common ground. That's the word I'm looking for. The common ground. When I think of that, I think about when I go to a party, I go to a party, I'm a little uncomfortable, especially if it's not my house or if the person that, um, I'm there with, you know, it's a lot of people. I want to get to know these people. So I'm in, I'm at this party And I see all these people. I want to talk to them. I need to find common ground. That's what is the same thing as when you're doing research on your audience. You're looking for common ground to connect with that audience so that they will listen to your pitch so that you can influence how they um, respond to your request. That is the overall piece to all of this all right so now she basically runs over all these different things and then you see here she how do we define audiences she talks about age location income educational level religion and culture how to understand audiences she talks about personas um she gives a little example here about carrie she's a business owner She tells her age, her occupation, her education, and additional personas. Now, I'm going to pause here because this reminds me of something. The other day, I was watching a Seth uh, Godin was doing an interview. And he made a good point. He talked about that we are still going, we're still building personas 
based on antiquated models. These models were created at a time when social media was not around. And data from the census was the primary data that we used to figure out the target audience. Now things have changed. Therefore, we have social media. Well, social media allows us to do psychographic information, number one, and some other things. So it's definitely changed. Now, in this particular class, we're going to give the instructor what the instructor has asked for. Just keep in mind, when you get into the real world, you may be faced with a different scenario which will require you to incorporate more modern ways of creating a persona focusing on the profiles of social media and and there's a lot of data out there now to make that happen so going back to here to carry the business owner and all her information additional personas for the same audience it goes goes on we also have module three uh all the assignments we talked about here uh let's see I'm skipping ahead going too fast here we go so um the objective what is the objective of this class three we've got a few so the learning objectives here is one explain the connection between storytelling and human nature Describe how bias impacts stories. Analyze how audiences impact storytelling decisions. Analyze cultural influences and shared experiences and communication messages. And identify the audience for a story. I touched on these just now. So... This basically reinforces the object, the, the, um, concepts that I just spoke about where you're explaining the connection between the storytelling and the human nature. That's you're building a connection. That's the whole piece of this understanding how to build that connection between the storytelling coming from me and the human nature connecting with the human your audience is human and it's interesting that they use the word human nature in my previous class when we talk about computer mediated communication a lot of times we build this wall where we forget that the other side of that wall in that digital realm are people we're interacting here with microphones and, and things like that cameras so there is no person here to give me that interaction back and forth to alert my brain I'm speaking to a person that's something you got to be mindful of so the storytelling concepts and pieces that you're putting together keep in mind that you're going to be talking to people in those audiences with that said describe how bias impacts stories everybody has a bias we all have biases why because we grow up in different environments we work in different environments we believe in different things so our bias impacts the story and that is what she's um the class is is drawing our attention to analyzing how audience audiences impact storytelling decisions for example you're not going to tell a story that's going to offend an audience if you've got a cult, you know, a diverse, chances are you've, you're talking to a diverse audience. So you got to be mindful on the story you tell and, and making sure it does not offend anyone. A good example for that, when I think about the autobiography of Indy Nui, she is the former CEO of PepsiCo. And she tells the story of how she had to come up with a campaign to introduce women and feminine project products, excuse me, products to people in India, her home country. Well, there was some guidelines that had to be followed 
because of the sensitivity of those products in that native culture. And that's, even though it's something every woman needed, there were still some sensitive areas and how that was presented and talked about. And I talked about one th that in a previous video as well. So you want to analyze the cultural influences. I just spoke about that. The cultural influences shared experiences and communication messages and identify the audience for the story. So these are, are the objectives and gives the overview. Don't have a discussion this week. Now I want to, let's see, that was the milestone. I want to draw your attention uh, back to uh, coming over here to the milestone rubric real quick and wrap this up real soon. Okay. So we went over the scenarios here and the props, the guidelines, submission, 500 to 750 words in length. And if you're using Microsoft Word, it does word counting. So keep that in mind. Make sure you do your APA formatting. Those are, those are key. And then she gives some supporting material. She gives a milestone one story pitch template. That's probably in Word. You want to download that. I'll do that later. She gives some U.S. Census Bureau. I just said that um, to, to help with your defining your persona. I just talked about how that was something they use in the past. So here, as you can see, when collecting data to determine your target audience, demographics, psychographics, and geographics, the U S census bureau is a good tool. There are some other tools you can use. I use a, a number of tools, but the U S census bureau is a good tool. Learning how to maneuver around these websites is key. I'm just going to click on this real quick to just to give you an understanding of what I'm talking about. So this is, this is a pretty overwhelming website. There is a lot of robust information. So becoming familiar with these things are a good, uh, habit to, to do because as you're going through your classes, um, here, you're going to become, you're going to need to use sites like this and they can be overwhelming because when you go in there, there's all this information flying at you and you're trying to figure out, okay, you can get, you can go down that rabbit hole where you get lost or you can find the information you need. But the key thing here is you want to definitely make sure you're getting your information, uh, and understanding how to get in there and go through it. So, uh, recommend that you do that. All right. So that's just some now on the rubric, just draw your attention right here real quick. Once you see this top line, so this top line, the criteria, communication, goal, and story message, they don't have any points. They're going to offer you for exemplary. They don't have any points. They're going to offer you for needs improvement. They're going to give you a hundred percent for proficient. What they're saying here is the proficient is identifies the story's overall message and communication goal. 15 points. That's a minimum of 15 points. What they're saying here is this area is subjective. That's what you're reading here. This is a subjective criteria, meaning you can, there is no wrong answer that means no matter what you choose, whatever your goal is for your story, however you choose your goal, they're good. They're, they're okay with that. So don't get caught up in, I got to make the perfect goal. No, you don't. What they want you to do is identify the story's overall message and communication goal. That is totally up to you. Everything else they're they've, um, adding a little bit more. So audience information, how well you develop and describe your target audience based on the profiling from the census bureau that they information that they gave to you, excuse me, relationships to the cultural experiences. Uh, what, how are you justifying the story's relevance to the audience, cultural experiences and being 
clear, insightful, and sophisticated of your creative manner, your audience engagement. They're going to be looking for a proficiency there. Is it insightful? Is it as sophisticated? Those are the key words. Articulation. And then of course, citations. If you get, you can get 10 points for no grammar errors and citing your course correctly. That's 10 points. So that's 10, that's 20. And then plus your 15. So that's 35. Okay. You're going to get, um, some points for, um, if you can divide this up, so that's 25 points here. So we got one, two, three categories, divide that out. And, and it'll give you an idea of breaking this down to 25, 20 for here, 20 for here. So I just wanted to draw your attention to those. Cause you know, it's all about making the grade. If you understand how that rubric is broken down and where your, your places are and how you can, um, I don't want to use the word manipulate, but basically you're finding your advantage points. I'm going to be honest. I'm always going for the exemplary. I'm going for the exemplary because to me, it says I have mastered it. And that is just my personality. That doesn't have to be what you do, but that's, that's what I like to do. And then of course, APS basics. So uh, I downloaded the template that she sent and I'll let, uh, show you what the template that she sent over. This is the template for the journal and basically it's already a formatted. When your professors give you stuff like this, save it, save it as a template. And that way you can constantly refer back to it and use it for other classes that may need an APA style. You will have to change the, um, this information up here, you know, the name, you're going to have to change the course and you're going to have to change the instructor if you're going to use it for another class. Um, but Hey, that's easy. Keep the formatting. Okay. Then, uh, down here's where you're going to put things in references. So lots of goodies. This is going to be a great week. I'm excited. Um, to put all this together and apply all this in my um, real life scenario situations. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you got some good gems and good meat and potatoes. I know it was a little long and, but hey, I hope you enjoyed the story. All right, everybody, I will catch you on the next video and have a fantastic week. Find great stories, share them on social media, build your audience, and just enjoy. All right, peace out.